I'm going to be reading a number of verses, so you may remain seated this morning. We'll be going through um, a good portion of picking verses out throughout the chapter. Uh, we'll begin with verse 1, and he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. You'll notice um, starts out chapter 4. He's teaching uh, a large group of people, uh, not just disciples, but a multitude. And uh, he's teaching them by parables. And also the Bible says in his doctrine. Verse 10, and when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve, asked of him the parable, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. Uh, we're going to speak a little bit about what the Lord's really saying here. He's not trying to keep people on the outside, obviously. It's never, that's never the Lord's desire. And so uh, this morning, uh, we're going into another lesson on together, we are healthy. Uh, in, in this chapter four, uh, the focus is around the parable of the sower. And uh, he gives the parable of the sower, and then he uses three parables three stories to teach um, the disciples what he's trying to say, what he's trying to get across. Uh, in verses 11 and 12, the, the Lord is making a twofold statement. Uh, first of all, the first statement he says to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. The mystery. Um, not everything is fully understood. Not everything is totally comprehended about the mystery or about the kingdom of God. That's what he first says. The second part of Jesus' response is he says to those who are outside, everything happens in parables. In order uh, that seeing they may not perceive and hearing they may hear and not comprehend lest they turn and it be forgiven them. He links the concealment of the mystery of the kingdom of God with a couple things. First of all, with blindness, and he also links it with uh, deafness. People who do not know the Lord, he's comparing it to not being able to see what God is doing or hearing what God is doing. And, and people who know the Lord, that special instruction is given by the Lord to, to let people grow in him. His desire is for everybody to be saved. Okay, but there are going to be those who are going to desire not to be saved. And what the Lord is bringing across is it is his will that everyone should be saved. But just because some don't want to be doesn't mean the rest should not be growing. And so we're going to speak to you this morning about, again, together we are healthy. What is the kingdom of God? Uh, we could... We could uh, share multiple verses this morning about the kingdom of God and how he speaks. I mean, it's very, uh, it's very even clear when his disciples asked him to teach them to pray. He starts with our Father, which art in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He's, he's starting out uh, that there's a kingdom that's, that's powerful and, and it's of God. And he desires for it to be accomplished. Uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17 and says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. He, he's clarifying that there's something deep to the kingdom of God. It's not some uh, kingdom that can be seen where there's a, a monarch or a, or, or a king that sits there and tells everyone what to do. No, his kingdom is much greater than that. It's much greater than, than what can be seen just with the natural eye. 
It's not meat and drink. It's not the things that would seem obvious to all that are around us, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord uses the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4 to show the importance of what the kingdom of God represents. I'm not uh, saying this morning that this is only what the kingdom of God is. He, the Lord teaches many, uh, many times about the kingdom. This is one uh, instance where he uses the parable of the sower, and he's sharing with the disciples. Uh, there's an indication that there's more present than just his 12 disciples, and uh, he's sharing with them the importance of how powerful his kingdom is. And he uses uh, the parable of the sower. And if you've read that or heard it before, there's uh, basically four different types of ground that are spoken of. And, and the, the sower is, is, is sowing seed on all the ground. And, and, he's, and he's speaking about some is just the wayside. It's, it, people are, uh, are not ready at all for any growth in their life. And that's and that's the prerogative of a person. They, that the power of choice that God has given every person. There will be people who will not desire the things of the Lord. Unfortunately. And then he speaks of, of, of stony ground. And, and how it doesn't have the root. Things start in people's lives. But they don't have the root to continue. And then he speaks about thorny ground. And how... Their cares of life and just the things around people in their daily lives choke out what God is doing in their life. Uh, That doesn't mean that the wayside, the stony ground, or the thorny thorny ground can't be ground in the future that God will have that will be plentiful in their lives. It It just needs more work. Just needs more work. No one is excluded from God working in their life. And, and sometimes, um, and he shows through this parable that there are people on the way, but they just need more work in their life. And then he speaks about good ground, and he speaks about how seed will fall in good ground, and it will bring forth and harvest, and, and um, the harvest of what he gives as, as 30 and 60 and 100. It's not the importance of the amount. It's the importance of... Uh, uh, filling the potential in a person's life and them producing according to what God has allowed for them to produce. And so he, he gives this parable, and, and the disciples are, are listening carefully, but immediately he goes into sharing three separate stories. First of all, he, sh- he shares the story of the candlestick, the candle on a candlestick. And in verse 21 is where you see this uh, first story. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be uh, manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. But he, or for he, that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken away that which he hath. And so he uses this first story of the candlestick. And following the interpretation of the parable of the sower is a pair of sayings that come close to the classic rhetorical comparison to the, the, what he was talking about with the sower. And he, he says, just as a lamp is put on a stand, what is, what is hidden or secret must come out into the open. The kingdom of God is, is not just an explicit theme here. He's, he's backing up what he said with the parable of the sower. But the pair of sayings contrast with uh, a transitional dialogue between Jesus and his disciples. And, and there's, there it is said that the mystery of the kingdom is given to the disciples with, uh, that, that, uh, and withheld from those who don't know the Lord. And yet, he says, there's something deep and powerful and great that every person can attain. 
when he's talking about the kingdom, he's going to use this first example of the candle on the candlestick and says, uh, clarifying the term mystery is in this, in this uh, passage is given what is hidden. That's what he rephrases it with, what is hidden and what is secret. The comparison with the lamp suggests that the mystery of, of the kingdom of God is not to be kept secret, but it is to be proclaimed. How powerful God is and how wonderful he is in your life. Uh, uh, there will be those, of course, that will reject the proclamation. But the, the circle of the disciples, is, it's, it's, it's open. He doesn't want it to be closed. He, he's always desiring for there to be growth in the church of the living God. The exhortation that he's uh, promoting here is to hear or to listen. Listen to the theme that is being talked about. He, he introduces that theme in verse 3, and yet he again says it in verse 9 and verse 23. Uh, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Interesting that that phrase is, is multiple times where he uses it in Scripture. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. There's a simple call to listen. Listen, let me tell you, this morning, growth, there is a lot of things happening around us in the world. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of voices. There's a lot of rah, rah, rah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff being said and a lot of things that are happening and a lot of, a lot of uh, the, uh, events that could grasp your, your mind and, and, and distract us from uh, what really matters. But he's, he's giving in this little story uh, a three-part idea of, of listening. Pay attention, he says in verse 24. Pay attention to what you are hearing. It's very important what you're listening to, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. It is, if you're going to be healthy, what you listen to is going to majorly determine your growth. If you spend all your time with a negative person, you're going to be so discouraged about growing. If you spend all your time with someone who doesn't believe that things can happen and take place, your growth will be stunted. You, you, what you listen to, uh, negative voices and, and voices that will continually uh, portray that uh, there's nothing good. Listen, if you and I want to find bad stuff, I mean, that's not hard. I mean, there's bad stuff everywhere. But in the middle of every situation, there's an opportunity. God has an opportunity if we will just listen. See, the opening statement seems to define the addresses as those who hear the proclamation, whereas the first metaphorical saying seems to identify them as those who proclaim, but he's, listen, that he's saying, listen, it needs to be told and it needs to be shared, but what you're going to say and what you're going to share is going to be determined by what you're listening to. People who are always told that they're no good will start to feel like they're no good. It's just the way it is. People who are actually told that they can do anything actually believe they can do anything. Um, <laughs> this happened, uh, of course, that was kind of the model with our children. You don't have to take a back seat to anybody. Just do what God's called you to do. And so sometimes they took that a little even too much to heart. So uh, I don't know. I think it was grade two maybe. Uh, they, 
we're going to, we were still in Bathurst, and they were going to do this little train ride for the students. And um, the students were going to get on the train in Bathurst, and we were going to pick them up in Miramichi. Some parents were going on the train with the kids, and some were going there to be the transportation to bring them back. So I happened to be one of the transporters of bringing people back. And uh, we get to Miramichi, and we're waiting there for the train. Train arrives, and this parent gets off the train, and he comes over to me. He's kind of laughing. He said, I heard some stories about you on the way down. I said, oh? He said, yeah. We, I heard you're really strong. I said, oh? Yeah, we were told you could bend steel. I was like, oh, man, what did Miko say? On that train, I have no idea. He's on there telling people that his father can bend steel. It's like, oh, no. When you start telling people they can do anything, they just believe that that's the way it is. You've got to be careful what you're listening to. You've got to listen to people that tell you that you can make it. You've got to listen to people that tell you you can stand for God no matter how bad it is. You got to listen to people that tell you that God still does it today, no different than He did it before. You got to listen to people that encourage you to take another step, go another mile, walk another day, get up another morning. You got to listen to people that say, you know what? We're going to stand with you through the trial. We're going to get to the other side. We're going to be victorious. Don't get yourself around people. Because what you, pro- that are negative, because what you proclaim, will come across as negative. When the Lord's talking about the soil, it would be easy to focus on three parts of the soil are not ready. Or you could focus on 25% is already ready, and you just got to plant. Be careful what you're listening to. Well, you know, there's stones there. There's thorns there. That's hard ground. Uh, Nothing can happen there. No, no, it just needs work. Uh, Just needs work. Listen to people. That'll tell you, just needs a little work. Uh, Just needs a little prayer. Uh, Just needs a little more uh, uh, believing in God and fasting and and calling upon the Lord. Uh, It just needs a little bit of rock picking. Uh, It just needs a little bit of getting rid of uh, the thorns and the thistles. uh, And the ground will be ready. Be careful who you're listening to about the kingdom I'll give you a good example don't get caught up in people discussing who has fallen away get caught up in someone discussing who has given their heart to the Lord it's all about focus of growth don't allow Don't allow yourself to grow in the wrong direction. Okay, And this is what he's he's saying about the kingdom. He's affirming uh, the tension is resolved by the assumption that that there's there's still something positive about what God is doing. The uh, The third part of the saying is, for with regard to the one who has, it shall be given him. And the one who does not have, even that which he has will be taken away from him. It seems to refer to those who, who don't know and, and the ones who do know in the dialogue of verses 11 and 12. And those who have the mystery of the kingdom will proclaim it and thus, and thus receive a greater reward, whereas those who do not have it will not understand. That doesn't mean that they will never understand. Be careful. Well, you know what? That's, they're just... They're just on that path, and that's the way it's going to be. No, no. Just a little bit of prayer and a little bit of digging and a little bit of rock picking and a little bit of taking the thorns and thistles out and allow God, allow the power of God to grow in their life just as he's growing in yours. It's a mentality. Be careful. If we're going to be healthy, you've got to be careful of what you're listening to. Be listening to positive voices. The second story that he uses is the growing seed. That's in verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. 
as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up, uh, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Uh, unlike the parable of the sower, which is a narrative, the story told uh, uh, here is like a simile, a comparison made in the present sense, present tense. The kingdom of God is compared with a man who sows seed on the ground presently, right now, without further participation. The seed sprouts and grows, and the earth produces of itself. And when the, the grain is ready, he puts immediately in the sickle, it says, and because it's harvest time. The, the parable discourse that, that began with the parable of the sower, in which the sower was likely to be identified uh, as an agent of the Lord. And, and this, the sayings uh, uh, of that that parable of the sower, of how that agent of the Lord, that, doesn't, that minister, that that person who just desires to sow is going to sow. And, and, and uh, that's the equivalence of the word, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And you allow it to be so. And, and yet here, he uses this um, powerful story, a simile of that story, of the growing seed. And he's, he's, bringing, out, he's bringing out a very powerful thought here uh, that... Uh, all of a sudden, you plant seed, and uh, without really any power of your own, within just a few days, a little blade pops its head through the ground. And um, I was blessed, privileged to grow up on a kind of a little farm, and we always had a large garden, and... and um, after you plant it, there was, there, was, there was a joy that came. No matter what you planted, even if you didn't like it. <laughs> I, there was lots of things I planted I didn't ever enjoy eating. But there was an excitement to what you planted all of a sudden had stuck its head through the ground. The blade came through. The little, the little sprout came up through the ground. Whether it was potatoes or, or carrots or beets or whatever it was. It didn't, it didn't matter what it was. The, the anticipation was that you planted it and without any power of your own, all of a sudden it sprouted. And what he's, what he's saying here is he's, he's, given, uh, he's given a simile to the, the sower and he's, he's talking about the earth producing of itself. And he's, he's talking about how, um, how you and I are not in control of growth. You can plant and you can water, but you don't cause the growth. You don't. You or I do not have charge over what grows and what doesn't grow. Hear me this morning. If there's a hunger and a desire in any person, no matter background, where they're from, or what they do, if there's a desire and a hunger, God sees that desire. The qualifications are not based upon you and I. It's only based upon the hunger and the desire of the person who wants to be more like him, who wants to grow in him. God knows the pace. Every, every plant does not grow at the same pace. It really doesn't. It grows at different paces. And yet by the time it's, it's time for harvest, it's ready. It's ready. And the planting and, and the weeding of those plants are not done the same. There's, there's plants you have to be more careful with. Yeah, my, my, you know, my dad would go out. My mom, of course, they were 
hard workers with the garden, and they would show us. There's like when when uh, carrots, when carrots and beets come up through the ground, they they pretty well look like weeds. <laughs> There's not a lot of difference between them and and what you would haul out. Big difference than when a potato comes through the ground. I mean, no trouble to pick out a potato. <laughs> you know, the potato plant, it, it's distinct. It's, man, no problem to pick out the weeds around the potato. But you've got to be really careful with carrots and beets. You can plant corn, no trouble to know what a corn stalk's going to look like. I mean, it sprouts out. It's, it, it's, it's totally different. Every plant grows differently. But the time of harvest comes at the same time. You and I do not give the growth. God gives it according to his plan, his purpose. He gives it according to his desire. He gives, and this whole idea of healthy living, everybody doesn't grow the same way. Be patient. Take time. Allow God to put his hand and be careful. You've got to be really careful when you're weeding carrots and beets that you don't haul out the plants. You've got to be really careful. Oh, I found out. <laughs> I found out that I, I hauled out some accidentally. Well, maybe on purpose. I don't know. No. No, you can, if you're not careful, you can, you can distract, take out the things that are supposed to stay. See, this, this whole idea, God is, he's, um, he's the one who's allowing the growth to happen. And he, and he points to this growing seed. And he says, listen, it will be manifested in its proper time. Allow people to grow at the pace God has for their life. Their life. Okay, the third one. I'm coming to a close here. The third one is, uh, starts in verse uh, 30. Uh, it's the grain of mustard seed. And he's given this third parable, the third little story. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison? Shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and, and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. He uses this grain of mustard seed as the third example, like the preceding parable the the mustard seed is actually again a simile to the story uh, the parable of the sower the kingdom of god is the point of comparison and 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 he's he's uh, he's he's making an, an opportunity for us to be able to understand what is it that god's trying to do here with this little little tiny seed yet it grows to be of the greatest of herbs and he's He's uh, implying that, you know, there's, uh, if we're not careful, impatience and discouragement uh, can be, uh, can, can come into the situation, oh my goodness, what, what is this ever going to accomplish? I can hardly see this seed. Can, no, no sense of putting much time into this one. This is just a tiny little seed. It's the smallest of seeds. But don't be impatient and don't be discouraged about growth because what ends up with God's power is it became the greatest of all the herbs. Oh, you can go back to a similar story that's being taken from, from Ezekiel chapter 17. And the, the Lord's given an example, kind of a, an analogy of what it's going to be like when it, when it comes to... Uh, him coming to earth and how 
that's going to be. That's, you, can, you can read about that in Ezekiel 17. He speaks like, it, like this. An eagle represents the king of Babylon. The top of the cedar stands for the house of David. And a vine by many waters in Jehoiakim, the exiled king of Judah who rebelled against the king of Babylon. The rebellion is condemned and God promises to plant a twig. A twig. That's what he says. I'm going to plant a twig from the cedar that will become a, a noble cedar unto which all kings of beasts will dwell and whose branches birds of every sort will nest. This, this is an allegory to everyone thinks that Jesus is going to come as a king and he's going to come in all glory and power. And yet it's portrayed, you know what? He's not coming to some big cedar tree. It's just going to plant a twig. Just going to plant a twig. And, and the same idea is being used here in this parable. Huh. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, if we're going to plant a seed, we want to plant something that's, that's great. It's well known. It's going to be a, a powerful seed. No, no. It's just a little seed. And it's going to become a shrub. <laughs> but it's going to be the greatest of all the shrubs. And he's kind of pointing this, this simile out of the, of the sower. And he's... He's bringing it back, and, and he says, listen, um, don't get impatient or discouraged by what you see. That's not the end. Oh, uh, well, my goodness, that's awful small little seed. How is that going to produce anything? And he's like, don't, don't be discouraged by the size of the seed. Wait until you see the result. It's like that with you and I. Oh, oh my goodness, that, they've got such a terrible past. And they come from such a hard life and a rough family. And they come from this part of town. And they, Don't be discouraged by the seed. Wait until you see the result. It's the power of God that gives the growth. Well, you know what? They've failed so many times and they've gave up so many times. And Don't be discouraged. Uh, wait till you see the end result of what God's doing. I, I, I'm always reminded of the story of Brother Mahaney. If anyone knew Brother Mahaney, he was a very vocal, a very interesting minister and became very instrumental in prison ministry. But I believe it was Brother Sanford that tried to work with Brother Mahaney before he ever came to the Lord. And Brother Mahaney was an alcoholic. And, and a lot of people would have just, you know what, it's, it's just pointless. It's no use. And, and Brother Sanford would go to uh, uh, Brother Mahaney's house. I, I heard this, the story. I, I wasn't there, obviously. But I heard the story how he would go to Brother Mahaney's house. And, and, and he would try to be there to pick him up for church. And he'd be passed out on the couch. And, and Brother Mahaney said, no, I'm not going today. i I, I got to work. And Brother Sanford said, you never worked a day in your life. Get up and come to church. You're, you're coming to the house of the Lord. And, and, and the persistence of, of Brother Sanford, how he, he kept after Brother Mahaney. And he became one of the greatest ministers to the prison ministry that there ever has been. Don't underestimate the seed. Wait until you see the end result. And that's what he's saying. Oh, listen, the, 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 the ground, the, this, this part of the ground is not ready, and this part of the ground uh, is stony, and this part of the ground's uh, got thorns on it. And, and don't, don't get discouraged, and don't look at the, the negative part of what's happening. He says there's going to be ground that's ready, a 30 and 60 and a 100 full. Wait till you see the end result. Okay. Uh, music come. Uh, I'll, fin I'll close this thing down here. How is this applicable to together we are healthy? Why, why does it matter? How is it applicable? Well, first of all, in the candlestick, the key point is to listen closely to what the Lord is saying. Take heed what you're listening to. It even implies that if we get used to listening just to little things, He'll give you even more things to listen to. 
That's what he says. If you just get just the small little times of the voice of God, he'll open up his voice to you. And, and you're listening, and you're listening closely to what God's doing. Listen to him. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the presence of God. The spirit of God. Let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. Be careful what you're listening. It's applicable to being healthy. If I'm going to be healthy, I've got to listen to him. I've got to listen to him. How is the, the growing seed applicable? The emphasis is not on the one planting or even the watering. Paul tells us that. One plants and another waters. But it's God that giveth the increase. What does that mean? What does that mean? matter when it comes to growth well uh, I may plant and you may water but it's neither one of us that can change anybody's life only growth comes from him so what it does it brings us into a trust factor if we're going to be healthy let's not get caught up in who's planting and watering that's just a necessity of us as disciples. Let's not get caught up in that. If we're going to be healthy, let's keep our focus on the growing seed and who is causing the growth. Only the Lord. Trust. Well, I tried this and I tried that and I tried this and nothing happened. You can't cause it to happen. You plant the seed. You water the seed, and only God can give the increase. Uh, oh, I have to go back to my planting days again just for a second. Is that okay? So I would sit there by the hour. Dad showed me. We'd take out all the old potatoes that were left in the spring. They have all kinds of things growing out of them. <laughs> he called them eyes. I don't know if that's the actual term or not, but this was the key component of cutting up the potato for seed. Every piece needs to have an eye. If it's got an eye, a little eye, then it's got opportunity for growth. So we would go along the, the row after potatoes are all coming up, and there's a couple spaces, no potato. Dig down there and find that piece that was put in there, and it just rotted. It had no eye. It had no eye. Cut it up without an eye. Oh, you plant a new one in there. Just put a new one in there with an eye, and within, a, within a, just a short period of time, oh, it, it, was, it was lagging behind me because it didn't get a, the same start as everyone, but it didn't have an eye. You don't allow yourself to get frustrated with the growth. You don't give it. Only God gives. Plant and water. Plant and water. Plant and water. That happens also in your own life. God, I'm trying. I'm giving you everything I got. How come it's not happening faster? You can't cause it to happen faster. Only God gives the growth. Allow him to do it at his pace. He knows the speed uh, that you need to grow. He knows uh, where you need to grow. Uh, allow God to give the growth. It's applicable to you being healthy. How is it applicable to you being healthy when it comes to the mustard seed? Don't get caught up in the discouragement and frustration of how small things are. How insignificant they seem. Because that's not the end result. A lot of times we're looking for all the great. Powerful manifestations of the Lord. And he just says I'm just going to let my presence be with you every day. Just going to let my power and spirit be with you every day. Just going to open up my word to you every day. Oh don't. Don't get me wrong, there will be powerful moments and there will be supernatural events that will happen in your life. But don't allow yourself to become frustrated and discouraged because you're not seeing all of those every day. There's something powerful about just the size of what God's doing in your life. That's not the end result. 
Well, you know what? I take one step forward and all of a sudden I feel like I'm falling two steps back. It's not the end. It's not the end. Read the last of the book and you'll find out what happens in the end. Stand this morning. If you're going to be healthy, listen. Listen closely to the voice of the Lord. Let Him give the growth in your life. And always remember the small things He's doing. They will keep adding to what God's powerful presence is happening in your life. Together we are healthy. I say all of that because sometimes we look at other people and maybe the growth that's happening in their life and don't allow yourself to get caught up. God knows the timing of what's happening in every person's life. He knows. He knows. God, I thank you this morning for your mighty presence. God, we're going to come forward and pray here. And God, I'm praying every person is under the sound of my voice this morning. The desire, the longing to be healthy in you. And I pray, God, that the parable of the sower and how you back that up with three simple little parables about the candlestick and the growing seed and the mustard seed and how applicable those are in our lives day to day. Just want to listen closely to your voice every day. We just want to take the growth that you have for us today. And God, we're looking forward to the end result of what you're going to do in our lives. Thank you, Jesus.